meeting of Florida uh, City Council Chambers, 5th floor, meeting July 11th, 2023, 6 p.m. Item 2, invocation will be given to us by Pamela Shaheen and the of Hope, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to Texas Pitch, uh, given to us by Councilman Mahoney. Good question, Pastor. Anybody wishing to join us in a moment of prayer? Please do so by standing up voluntarily. Thank you for this opportunity. I want to read two scriptures and then I'll pray. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send out for yourselves men, so that they may spout the land of Canaan, which I am going to give to the sons of Israel. You shall send a man from each of their fathers. Over in verse 8, it says, If the Lord is pleased with us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for tonight, Father God, and for the purposes of this meeting, Father God, for this council, Lord, for our city and for our nation. Lord, we believe that each of these council members, God, have been anointed and appointed by you, Lord God. I believe that they have gone out and they have spied the land and they said, yes, it is a good land and it is a land that flows with milk and honey. God, I believe that these men and this woman have your heart for this city, for your people, for your glory, Lord God. Lord, we pray tonight that your purpose, your passion, your presence, and your peace would be felt in this room, Lord God, in this city, in this county, and in our nation, Lord God. We lift all of these things up to you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one indivisible. We don't have no proclamations but petitions for awards. Any citizen wishing to come on the non agenda items can do so by filling out a comment card and uh, stating your uh, uh, full name. You can do so by coming forward. Any member of the public may address the city council regarding any of the agenda items before or during the consideration of said item. Council, uh, we have a consent agenda presented to us uh, before. We will overlook that. And upon the uh, review, we'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. So I have a motion uh, to approve the consent agenda presented by Council Member Horn, second by Council Member Thompson. All in favor, you came by saying aye. 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 All opposed, you came by saying nay. Motion passes uh, unanimous 6 0. We're going to move on to the regular agenda, item okay. 7. Hey, are you going to? Oh, yes. So uh, mm -hmm. before I move forward, uh, I'm going to request council. Uh, I'm going to request a motion to suspend the rules. Uh, we can move some items around. Uh, consider a motion uh, now for uh, that action. I uh, so move. I have a motion by council member Vasquez. Do I have a second? Second, second by council member uh, Haynes. All in favor, can you by saying not? Aye. Aye. All opposing, can you by saying nay? Motion passed unanimously. We're going to have some movements around. Um, we have an individual that has a primary commitment and wants to get out as soon as possible. So we're going to move up item uh, on the regular consent agenda, item 12, above item 7. And that was to consider economic development agreement between Odessa Development Corporation, Border States, and Chris Crow. Honorable Mayor, distinguished council. Good looking council tonight. Because we moved them up on the yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> hey, thank you guys. I have the HOA meeting for my lake house in Granbury, and I'm hosting the Zoom meeting here in a little bit. So thank you guys for making arrangements for that. I appreciate it. Uh, tonight I come before you guys. We actually have a couple of items. The first is uh, the Otis Development Corp Corporation would like for the council to consider an economic development agreement between the Odessa Development Corporation and Border States Industries. 
Four States Industries Incorporated will operate a wholesale distribution facility of electrical, construction, industrial, and utility and data communications materials and equipment classified as numbers 423610 and 423690 of the North American Industry Classification System in Ector County, Texas. The company will increase primary jobs, which satisfies the requirements of sections 501 and 504 of the local government code. And the company agrees to retain 26 full-time equivalent jobs and will add seven full-time equivalent jobs during the term of the agreement, which will translate into approximately $1,632,000 in annual payroll over the next five years. The company will make a capital taxable investment of approximately $10.5 million for construction of a new 30,000 square foot facility in Ector County, specifically at 300 South Meadow, which will be on the corner of Trunk and Meadow, and that's located in the Industrial District 1C. Based on the amount of taxable investment and the number of jobs and payroll during the term of the agreement, the company qualifies for a total grant in the amount of $970,660 to be paid out in five equal installments each year annually of $194,132 if the company maintains compliance with all terms and conditions of the agreement. The Odessa Development Corporation Board approved this agreement at their June 15th meeting and we're asking for council's agreement as well. Council, any questions? Uh, motion to consider for approval. So moved. I have a motion by Councilmember Swan. Do I have a second? Okay. Second by Councilmember Haney. All in favor, you can't say not. Aye. Uh, both in favor, say nay. Motion passes in item um, 13. Thank you. So item 13, the Office Development Corporation is asking City Council to consider the approval of a, consi a compliance consulting services agreement and engagement letter between the Odessa Development Corporation and Whitley Penn LLP. The Odessa Development Corporation economic development agreements usually have a term of at least five years and in exchange for incentives require the company to create or maintain a certain number of jobs and make a taxable investment on site of new or expanded facilities. Pursuant to the Odessa Development Corporation policy, the company is required to submit supporting documentation of compliance and the compliance is to be reviewed on an annual basis. The ODC has previously contracted with Weaver and Tidwell to perform these compliance reviews. In December of 2022, the Odessa Development Corporation sent out a request for proposals for compliance consulting services and Whitley Penn submitted a response to perform compliance monitoring reviews in an amount not to exceed $6,500 per review. The attached agreement will be for a term of one year and shall continue on a year-to-year -year basis unless terminated by either party. The Odessa Development Corporation Board approved this agreement on May 18th, 2023, and is asking for your approval to go inside. Mr. Crow, what was the uh, what was the cost per review prior to this this proposal? Um, Weaver and Tidwell was charging us over fifty five hundred dollars per proposal, but their new proposal uh, for renewal was going to jump up to sixty five hundred as well. Okay. How much? Sixty five hundred. Okay. Is the same? Yes. Okay. So each time one of these comes up for the payment, they've got what they're going to review. Well, out there in compliance. Yes, sir, that's correct. And these are actually billed out on an hourly basis based on yeah. the officers that are doing it and their number of hours, but the maximum of the amount, of course, is Yes, sir. Okay. Council, do you have questions? I have a motion for approval. Uh, so move. I have a motion by Councilman Rusk. Second. Second. Second by uh, Councilman Cornell. All in favor of getting the same act. Uh, uh, all those in case of any. Motion passes. Again, right. thank you so much for readjusting the schedule. My homeowners association will thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, now everybody knows the seat. You got to get moved up. Make sure you have a Zoom meeting with HOA. So, uh, <laughs> the next time you come here before the council, uh, Mr. Crow, I want to make sure you remind us if you are a good-looking council. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Sure <laughs> sir. <laughs> All right. Well, we have one time deal. After a very scheduled uh, agenda here, um, item seven is to consider approval of real estate broker service. Mr. Jones. Mayor, I have uh, Mr. John Harris here, and this is simply the uh, request or proposal that we sent out here a month or two ago about selling our real estate. Mm -hmm. And it is for a two-year term, and uh, Mr. Harris has agreed to charge us five percent. Uh, which is less than the customary 6%, if, if that is correct. And uh, so anyway, I would ask for you to approve it. So, but Mayor, I also want to ask you, uh, we need to decide what properties 
you want sold? Do you want the interim city manager to handle that? Or do you want us to bring it back to y'all to say, okay, we want this property sold, that property sold. How do y'all want to do it? Or do you want uh, Mr. Bernal to stop identifying it? Gotcha, Kevin, let's have a discussion on this. Does anybody have any questions? Bring up any? Are we just talking about the, the anti lots on universities? Is that what we're talking about moving? Just all of those or well, that can be in part of the conversation or can it be expanded or reduced. Right. And that could that could be part of it. It could be also fire station six, because I know the asbestos there is gonna be it's half a million dollars, I think is what we were looking at. So it could be anything that y'all want it to be. I mean, do you want him to sell a couple of properties or do you want him to go and see if he can sell several properties? Whatever you want. It could set precedence for a future council too. That's what's considered. Right. So I think it needs to come back to council when you when you get decided about. It. I just, I'd like for it to come back to council. Okay. Right. So would you like Mr. Bernard to identify? Um, I guess identify what properties need to be sold, and then bring it back. So okay, Mr. Harris, here you go. Yeah, case by case. Okay. Um, also, what's the thought process behind the two-year term on a contract? Uh, well, usually it will give him time to actually go out and, and market it. And, because if he were to do six months, his father will sit there a year. Okay. So two years is, is, is reasonable, very reasonable. Yeah. Have, really have we had in the past um, a realty company representing us in selling our properties, or have we done that on our own? I, I, come on up here, because I think John has actually done this in the past. Okay. Um, in the past, I was with Apex Real Estate with Laura Haynes, and the city owned like 20 homes they had purchased, and there was going to be some sort of a program with the state of Texas uh, that they were going to work together and sell their first responders. The city had the homes, I believe, five years vacant, yeah. and it didn't work out. So that's when city council hired Laura Haynes, I was with Laura Haynes to work on the package together to work for the city. So I've done this before with them, and that's how those work. And uh, they had everything appraised, and then we went out and marketed the properties and sold the properties. And when we had them appraised, that's what they had to sell for, mm -hmm. except one of them, and it, it had some damage and other stuff while it was on the market, and one of them we did reduce. Yeah. And council, again, this goes back to our discussion with bringing a real estate uh, broker in like Mr. Harridge, where he will be able to go out and get an appraiser, because this is this is in the course and scope of his business on a daily basis. Right. right. So it just basically frees us up. So you pick the properties, we can put it on there July 25th or shortly thereafter, and give them to him, and he can go take care of it. Yeah. I think it'd be easy to sit down with Mr. Bernal, go through what the city owns, have an entire list, and y'all say. Yes, yes, we, we're keeping, no, we're not, and what you want, and then maybe let him do the work on it, and we can come back to you with, this is the appraised process, this is where we're at, this is what we want to sell, and that, at that time you can say, yes, we want to, or no, we're going to keep those for future development. Yeah. John, one of the things we're finding is that we're finding out, and I've been asking the question <clears throat> for two years now on the council, we're finding out that we own minerals under the city that we didn't know we owned. And we're going to retain those. And we're, so we need to make sure, and we've got, a, we've got one of the gas attorneys on set. Um, on, uh, Definitely on that. On yeah. any property we sell, uh, there's a box where it's checked that yeah. the previous we're owner will retain uh, all royalties, so the yeah. royalties will stay with that. Yes. That's, that's easy. Yeah. So basically we'll be doing that on pretty much everything. That's why yes, we, we yes, want everything out for review, make sure that yeah. that's, that's being addressed. Yeah. We think we have a great opportunity. I've been saying it and yeah. finally figured out it's probably happening and we need to, to do that. So. Okay. Yeah. so Mayor, all I need is just a motion to approve the contract and and we'll we'll get it get a, get it underway for you. Yes, Mayor. Uh, I vote to accept the contract. Okay, we have a motion to uh, accept uh, and approve the real estate broker services by Council Member Haney. Second. Second, second by Council Member Trump. All in favor of the say not. Aye. 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 Both the game for saying that. Motion passes unanimously. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Then we'll move on to a public hearing. Item 8, open a public hearing to consider a request by a union engineer for a zoning change from FD, Future Development District, to a planned development like commercial district on 13.018 to track the land. Ms. Bill. Ms. 
change from feature development district to pond development district um, like commercial district subject to conditions A through C. Uh, that the use of the development of the proposed the property shall conform to regulations of like commercial district except however that the development will only apply to office, general business or <coughs> professional or a new auto display and sell indoor or and new or use auto sell outdoor shall be the only commercial use allowed. Sorry, that's how it's written. <laughs> now I know why Maria gave it to you. Yes. <laughs> um, and that the property should also uh, conform to the site plan which is attached, will be attached to uh, the report. We did send out 35 notifications, five came back um, and five were in opposed to the um, proposal. Uh, we do strongly believe that by us going with a planned development district, if something else comes, if they decide to sell it, you will always have somebody coming to you guys with the new development for you guys to approve it. So you have more of a, a control in that way. And then also by not allowing all uses under commercial, we're protecting the neighborhood that's already established there. Right. So I'm open for any additional or any questions. Councilor, any uh, questions? I think that's why so each business could be individually looked at in yeah. the future. Yes. Three-story three building, right? Correct. Yes. That's good. Uh, any questions? Direction. Since this is a public hearing, I will now open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to comment on um, item eight can do so by coming forward, filling out a uh, speaker card, stating your full name. You can do that by coming forward now. Seeing that nobody rushed up to the podium, I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion for item eight. I so move. I have a motion for approval by Councilmember Vasquez. Uh, second. second. Second by Councilmember Swan. All in favor of getting by saying that. Aye. Aye. All opposed in getting by saying nay. Motion. Easy for you to say. Motion Aye. passes unanimously. Motion. <laughs> Item 9, open a public hearing to consider a request for Park Hill for a zone change uh, from a future development district to a retail district on 20.13 acres of land in section 46, plot 41. Yes, okay, so the applicant, uh, Park Hill, is requesting a zone change for the future development district to our retail district on a 20.13 acre track of land <coughs> for future retail. Uh, the property located to north, east, and south are zoned feature development district. The property to west are zoned uh, special dwelling district. Um, staff is recommending the approval of the zone change for the feature development district to retail district, uh, subject to condition A, which would be that they should conform to all regulations under that district are retail district. We believe that as the city is growing, we're creating a transition from one uh, district to the other one. We're not just um, overseeing, um, I guess, the master plan for the city. 
So with the developers, even though it's it's a retail, they're being more cautious and prepping. So like in this case, uh, they're willing to put like a masonry wall, which they already have it on site, in where they're kind of creating buffers and know to transition the retail space to fit with the neighborhood. And now we'll open to any questions. Can any questions? There's nothing there now, though. Uh, just a little bit further yeah. up the housing. Yeah, I know. That, that's a waste, though. That's just now starting to go, too. So just so everybody's clear, Correct. this is all in the city. Correct. Yes. Which means we get to sell tax. Yes. Yeah. Even though it's in Midland County. Correct. So they get some of the property tax. But it's okay. Sale so tax is ours. Sometimes people get confused about that ranch up there, so I just want to make sure they understand Catch any questions? This is a public, public hearing. Anybody wishing uh, to address item nine as presented can do so by coming forward and presenting uh, your full <coughs> name by filling out a uh, common card, a speaker card. You can do so by coming forward now. Uh, I heard a boom, but I thought somebody was coming up. <laughs> Seeing that once again there wasn't a rush for item nine, uh, I will close the uh, public hearing portion and consider a motion for approval on item nine. I have a motion by Councilmember Hain. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Councilmember Connell. All in favor, the kidding, but say not. Aye. All opposed, the kidding, but say nay. The motion passes now. We can move on to item 10. Open the public hearing to consider granting a specific use permit request to allow workforce housing in an industrial contract district on lot 6, block 2, OIBC Park Edition, section 32 2. Thank you. The applicant, Charles Mark Jones, who is the leasee of the property, is requesting a specific use permit from the City of Odessa City Code Chapter 14 Zoning, Article 14-2, Use, Section 14-2-6, for Workforce Housing and Industrial Contract District. The site is located in the City of Odessa, ETJ, and governed by Ordinance Number c 4 Dash 142 Grant Odessa Industrial District 1 dash B Industrial 2023 dash 0 0 0 sorry 8382. Well, <laughs> that's a lot. Okay, so um, we believe that we are in a need for uh, more workforce housing. So we are in favor of supporting this um, uh, request. However, in the past, um, you guys have seen it with less regulations. Um, there's a little bit more in here because that's actually what our code calls for. Um, so I don't know if you guys want me to read each one. There's It goes from A to M or just I can do it this way. The City of Odessa Planning Department supports the SCP of workforce housing because it provides housing to a needed industry and will help solve the housing shortness. Additionally, they are in compliance with the regulations of workforce housing. Therefore, staff recommends approval of the specific use permit for workforce housing subject to condition A through M. Now, would you guys like me to read each one? The one, the, the one I think is important, if I'm not mistaken, is two persons per Correct. and two cars. Uh, two so vehicles. each, so it's two persons per dwelling at the same time. Right. The max. I believe they're only uh, proposing five units, so the max right. would be mm -hmm. ten. And then if they have vehicles, it would just be one per person. Right. And then there is a start date and there's an end date. Um, so for them, the start date would be on July 25th, 2023, and it would end on January 1st, 2024. And that's because we're going with their lease agreement. They can then come back and amend and request to extend for a max of three years. And we also added that if there are any violations at any time, the city has the opportunity to uh, remove this uh, ordinance. 
Another job Wait. for code enforcement. Sorry? Another job for code enforcement. Yes. Catherine, okay. any questions? Seeing that this is a public hearing, anybody wishing to come forward and uh, speak on the item 10 can do so by coming forward, filling out a speaker uh, card. You can do that by uh, coming forward now and stating your, your full name for the record. Seeing once again, nobody came forward. I will close the uh, public hearing. Uh, and then I will con uh, I will uh, consider a motion for uh, approval of this item. Before we do that, recognize the uh, dais. Uh, I will inform council that I have a conflict of interest on this item, and so the uh, mayor will be abstaining. So I will consider a motion for approval. Forward to now. I have a motion by Councilmember Haney for approval. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Con uh, Councilmember Connell. All in favor indicate by saying not. Aye. 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 All those uh, against indicate by saying nay. Motion passes five with one abstention. <laughs> Moving on to resolutions. Item 11, consider budget amendment for the mid year review of the employee compensation form of one time payment. Uh, Interim city manager, Ben Nutt. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Within the last six months, inflation, the cost of goods and services have impacted every employee at every level. We have developed two options for the City Council's consideration that will provide employees a one-time payment to help offset the cost of some of those additional expenses. Currently, the City of Odessa is ahead in sales tax revenue. When compared to the budget, we expect the trend for the rest of the fiscal year to continue and go up. Every department within the city is experiencing challenges with employee recruitment and retention. It is difficult for the city departments to be competitive with the current local market for good quality employees. Furthermore, it is also difficult for departments to retain those same employees because of our inability to be competitive with the private industry. The options presented on the one-time payment have the least impact to the city's budget because they will only occur once. The options are as follows. Option one, to provide a one-time payment of $1,500 to all full-time employees. Option two, to provide a one-time payment of $1,500 to all full-time employees, excluding council-appointed officials sworn public safety, and emergency communications. These exclusions are due to the consideration of the salary increases public safety and dispatch have already received during the fiscal year. So Seth have provided a couple of worksheets, and if you have any questions, Seth is available to answer them, or I as well. Okay, Chester, you have the worksheet on the front of it. Uh, open up the desk for any questions uh, to uh, Mr. Bernal or uh, for staff. Good evening. For everybody. <laughs> I think the worksheets are pretty pretty clear. Yeah. I'm ready to make a motion, but if anybody else would like to discuss it, y'all can go ahead. So, Seth, we're still collecting about a million. What are we collecting a month? Yeah, about a million three. A million three? Yes, sir. So that's, that's kind of going up, and we expect that trend to continue through the rest of the fiscal year. Do you? Okay. We have two more months. Yeah, we've got two, Third, more, yeah. two uh, more months. Yeah, so a couple of months of that. We're mm -hmm. working in, in, back in time at the same time, too. So, yeah. And your confident months. option A will take. We have plenty of funds there. I've been looking at your options A and B. Yes. Um, on the, the sheets I provided you guys, um, I went a little bit more in depth, too, to, for you know the retirements and uh, t taxes and everything like that, so y'all can see that effect on it too. But the total cost is what, what for both options. So. Is is the one time fifteen hundred dollars uh, a will it be taxed? Federal income tax, yes, taxed and also uh, uh, documented for retirement. Okay. <clears throat> no way getting around. Yeah. Okay. I would like to see all employees get it, I would make a motion for option A. Is that a formal motion? Yes, sir. 
Council, we had a formal motion on option A by Council Member Swan, and we had a second by Council Member Hain. Any other discussion? We'll ask for a vote. Then, uh, Council, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, indicate by saying nay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very Thank much. You. Sir. Thanks for preparing this. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. We're going to make this available uh, for any of you that have any questions. We're going to move on to. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, maybe you have to rest. When will we'll this take effect? For the employees? So, yes. Uh, the week of the 21st, I believe. Let me just double check the calendar real quick here. I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor and Council, uh, we will also include a letter from the Council for all employees. And, and that payment will go out next, next week. Next week? Yes, we have a payroll this week. It will be performed for the week we do not have a payroll. So. Okay. Thank you, Sabre. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to item 14, consider accepting an appropriate fund for the amount of $135,000 to the city of Augusta's department for the bus and bus. Thank you, Chief Good afternoon, uh, Council Mayor. This is simply a request to accept an appropriate uh, fund in the amount of $135,000 donated to the city of Augusta Police Department by Busting for Badges. Busting for Badges is a clay shoot, I think everyone knows fundraiser for local law enforcement agencies. Um, this year it, it went two and a half days and I think next year we'll probably go three days because we turn people away. So this amount could actually have been, been more. Uh, when we look at this 135000 what's really important to think about is that's $135,000 to the Odessa Police Department, $135,000 to the Midland Police Department, $135,000 to the Edgar County Sheriff's Office, and $135,000 to the Midland County Sheriff's Office. So this is a tremendous amount of money that was raised in that two and a half days. Um, and I, I've got to say, um, you know, the money's great, the money is awesome, but, but when the men and women that are the boots on the ground that are doing the job, they see the support, the number of people that turn up out there for this fundraiser, I think it means something to them too. So Busting for Badges has been a, a great endeavor. I remember that while the first year I think we were involved, we got a check for $28,000. <coughs> How long ago was that? That was eight years ago. So $28,000 was still $28,000 more than we had. Yeah. But for it to go up this much is, is spectacular. Pretty exciting. Do we need a team? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some good shooters out there. Oh, yeah. uh, no doubt. All right. Council, any questions? All right. Uh, right. Motion. Motion. We have a motion by Council Member Haney for approval on uh, item uh, 14. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Council Member Swanner. All those in favor of the saying aye. Aye. All opposed in favor of saying nay. Motion passes now for 6 0. Thank you very much, sir. We're going to move on to item 15 to the termination of Director Cannon Independent School District School Attendance Court and a local agreement with the City of Odessa. Mr. Jones. Mayor, so this is uh, the termination of our interlocal agreement with ECISD for Truancy Court. Now, we are still going to be doing, taking the misdemeanor C's and the truancy cases, and we're still going to be prosecuting those. We're still going to be holding court for truancy court. The only problem is, is that we've been getting paid to do something that we should not have been paid to do. There are other schools here that we take their cases, we don't charge them a dime. But we have been taking $12,000 a month for about 10 years from ECISD. And there's a problem there, to me, in my opinion, it's illegal. And it's also unethical. And so what I'm asking you to do is to terminate this agreement. And what I will do is we have a 60-day notice. We'll, we'll send them a, a letter terminating it, but we will still accept their cases, <coughs> just as we do everybody. Okay, so walk us through it 10 years ago, and then what, 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 what was struck, how was it being done, and, and what makes it unethical and illegal today? Well, the, the thing is, is that uh, this truancy court is supposed to be housed inside the municipal court. 
not the city attorney's office. Okay, so it was done this way 10 years ago, and I don't really know all the, the details and everything. But so I have two of my folks that went to Austin, and they're asking them, they're saying, okay, who, uh, where are you at, municipal court? Well, are you with the judges? Yeah, with the judges. How many of you are with the prosecutors? Guess who was with the prosecutors out of 254 counties? Us. Plus. So uh, there's, there's a fundamental problem in doing this. It's just like if you were to go down to the district attorney's office or the U.S. attorney's office, you wouldn't go and say, here's $100,000 prosecuting the case. You wouldn't do that. It's unethical. So what I want to do is terminate this where we will quit getting the $12,000. And also, I don't know, Seth, have we found out where the money's at? Or? I can't seem to find where, what, what identifies what the payment pieces of it was. And, and here's another dilemma that we have. This truancy court should have been set up in a bank account and never gone into the general ledger. Another okay. illegal activity. Seth, can you come up here real quick? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is a question for both of you. So, out of 254 municipalities, we were the only one. Counties. So, uh, uh, Cedar Odessa is the only one doing it through the prosecutors. Yeah, and that's wrong. Should have gone through municipal court. Should have gone through municipal court. And Mr. Bernal has already got that set up with the municipal court director. She's okay. getting ready to take it all in. So, from the, the, the 12K for the last 10 years, so basically, what you're basically saying is that is there a general ledger? There's a, there is a line item. But the money was never deposited in a into a separate separate account, account and it as just required went into by the law. deep hole of the general fund like everything else. Right, it's part of the pool fund, which has it, been pretty it, much consistent what we've been mayor, for the last eight months. My fear is that it's one hundred forty-four thousand dollars, and if when, once we do the forensic audit, we may be owing ECISD money back. That's my fear. Okay, so here, here's here's the question. So how is it supposed to be handled? How, how are the other 253 municipalities? Well, let's here? take the city of Houston. The city of Houston actually pays a group of juvenile case managers, and they do it inside their justice court for Harris County. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then other counties, they will, they, they will actually pay them to be inside the municipal court. So it's done like that throughout the state of Texas, but for us. So who handles the, uh, the cases, and, and, and is there counseling involved? Or? Yes, the, these juvenile case managers, as, as the law is, is written, these juvenile case managers are borderline counselors. And Mr. Vasquez can probably attest to this, that they are borderline. I mean, they have, they have to have backgrounds in uh, psychology, sociology, social work. Because these kids, it's trying to keep these kids from going down a path that they can have come back. It's about protecting these children. So that's what we are wanting to do here because the folks that I have, they weren't trained like that. And so what we need to do, and Mr. Mr. Bernal has already got uh, the uh, municipal court director lined up on doing this. She's going to hire one or two to handle these cases. Of course, the prosecutor's office will still be prosecuted when the juvenile case manager says it's okay to prosecute. Is there any tie to all of this with uh, teen court? No, sir. It was just... No, sir. Supposedly getting 144000 a year for 10 years, that's a million four forty. Yeah. Uh, over a 10-year time period, and, uh, and that money was not actually being used to pay anybody to do that, or I'm trying to understand... We, Seth, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have found I think we found postage, I think, or something like that. Well, we have. was a big one that I saw. Yeah. Um, I know at, at year end, it's always just a normal, it's a. Four or $5,000 uh, postage. It's an entry that gets made to, to clear that account good to go, like for, for the, co the cost of the contract. Now, I don't know, other than the postage, that's what. Yeah, that's all we would able to I guess to what I'm asking to be more specific is any of this 144000 a year was not. Funding anything, <laughs> judge, judge uh, salaries, uh, anything like that? To my knowledge, I don't believe so. I mean, we, we could not do that.
determine where, it was, where it's at. But was that, would that have been the intent of uh, ECISD? No, it, it was supposed to fund like, uh, the, the, it may have been the intent, but I don't know if it was ever done. Okay. I can't, I can't answer that. Yes, sir. I, I don't know. So we have a general ledger. So the payments are coming in monthly. Yes, sir. So it was going into the general fund. But you don't know, once it was in the general fund, how that money was, was dispensed. It was you, and, and so, well, it, it, and we don't know really what was it intended for, but we definitely don't know how the disbursements of that, of that 12,000 monthly was dispersed annually for the last two years. If I have instruction to find it, I can find it for you. So I, I just haven't had the instruction yet to find that. Okay, so, so moving forward, um, so Ms. Brenner, explain to us what's the process that you've instructed the, uh, uh, the director so I've instructed the director that she is going to take over the case manager, the juvenile case manager, and I spoke with her, and so she's currently going to take the one that we have, and we'll progress to the second because of the caseload. Okay. What is the caseload? Uh, well, Mark, do you have an idea? Do you have an idea? Um, it varies. Um, I know that currently we have about 600 very contributing to non-attendance cases yeah. that are still being reviewed and probably about that many for that class C's. That's just from ECISD. Yes. yes that what doesn't, else are we who, who else? And I, you were telling me earlier, who else? Come on up here. You, 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 uh, <laughs> you know she doesn't sure. like that. No, she doesn't like that. But, but she, but she's a, she's a walking encyclopedia. So 600 cases to ECSD right now. Who else are we handling? We're handling, um, Richard Milburn. No. I, I don't know if we're handling any of the charter schools. I haven't been at Minnesota support in a bit, but you probably Richard Milburn still. And, um, I know that at times, many months ago, we did the Harmony. Um, so I don't know if they're currently accepting uh, from charter schools or from private schools. In cases vary, you know. Yes. It yeah. could be more, it could be less, you just don't know, you know what yeah. the variables are. But the volume is large. Yeah. So very, it's large. Wow. And so the case example you gave on the, uh, uh, the case managers in Houston, technically being counselors and that kind of right. thing. Right. They're, they're borderline counselors. They're, they're well, you yeah. know. I wonder if it's a specific type of licensing and counseling that these people have that... I don't know if it's specific. I just know that they have a, that, that they have a background in sociology, psychology, and, and things of that nature, social work. It's, it's, it, but that's something that... Uh, that is being worked on and everything because we want we want to do what's right period so let me get some clar clarification here for the consideration of determination in the school district uh, the unilateral agreement between the ECIC and CEO justice so we're term you're recommending for termination termination but we're going to quit getting paid is what I'm recommending now we're going to I've already talked to uh, Tatiana Dennis and she is working up on an M. She is the attorney for ECISD. Okay. And she's working for uh, an MOU, a memorandum of understanding. Basically, it's going to lay out everything that we're going to do, but we are not going to accept payment. That's where the, the illegal and ethical part comes along, in my, mind, in my opinion. Okay. And it's just not something I'm willing to do. So, let me ask this question. So, the thing is, is that the slash uh, whoever's going to be handling these cases, case management. Um, where is that, is that side going to come from? For the one or two? It'll be funded through the payments. Uh, that's going to be the partial payment. So it should fund itself. From 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 um, the true student and parent? No, no, from the, the payments made to Oh, you're saying you're not taking the prosecution no. your department? No. no. Okay. We'll, we'll okay. No. I don't know. That, that, that's, what, that's, what, that's what's that's okay. what's happening. Okay. Yes. So 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 the payment is going particularly what's being accepted and going through the prosecutors. Yeah. You're saying it's unethical. It's unethical. Okay. Now, 
Now, and we haven't got that. I don't. I don't haven't talked to uh, Miss Jawaski, but uh, I'm assuming that she is going to want us to create some sort of contract with ECISD for municipal court to get paid. Yes, you would we'll have to. So, so I guess what we're going to fix here is that we already have the ledger, out, but we are actually going to create the account where the money will be able to track. So we have our balance sheet. We know how much money has come in, how much has been expended, and where that money has been allocated, whether it's salary, supplies, things of that nature, correct? Yes, sir. So at the time that we make this move, we will create a proper account and a proper accounting method. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And, and Mayor, what I'm, what I'm wanting to do is just terminate this, and then once told by y'all or Mr. Bernal that we can we can enter into an agreement with ECISD, work something else out for the money. If, they, if we can get that far along, for it will be paid to municipal court, where it should be, should have been all along. All right, Council, any further questions? Any more discovery? <laughs> that, that's why I brought that up about the municipal court. I would have thought yeah. and assumed that this money was going to this. No, it was. It was going to the city attorney's office. I mean, that, 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 that's tantamount to going over here and saying, here, Mr. Galvin, here's $50,000 to prosecute my case for me. Yeah. You know, it's just such a conflict. We can't have it. And this has been going on for 10 years. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, it's, it should have been dealt with, but it, now we're dealing with it. All right. Councilor, any other further discussion on this? I will entertain a motion for consideration of termination of Edgar County Independent School District School Attendance uh, Court for interlocal agreement with the City of Odessa. I so move. I have a motion by Councilman Velasco, second by Councilman Thompson. All in favor indicating by saying aye. 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 All opposed indicating by saying nay. Motion passed in 9 6 0. We're going to move on to item 16, consider approving the signing and installation contract associated guarantee agreement with Performance Services Incorporated. Mr. Jones. Mayor, you ready to spend some money? Well, we get yeah, no thousands of money. Yeah, <laughs> come on, come on up, Chip. Right. I have got Chip and Jenna here, and they will help fill in the blanks. This is first thing we're we're going to talk about. Y'all, y'all have it in y'all's packet. Is the installation contract, and uh, and I will ask Jenna and Chip to kind of fill us in on this and and go from there. So there are two contract, three contracts associated with our project. The first one is the installation contract yep. that will relate to the guaranteed energy project. So it will show the, that we are also guaranteeing that $3 million per year. It lays out the entire uh, project schedule. So per Texas legislation, that will be under the TIPS co-op purchasing. And the reason we have a second is that there needs to be a professional services contract for the design of the Yukon plant and the engineering work. They have to be separate. That is why there are two contracts. Yeah. And then the third one is a financing resolution that allows the city to take out the money to go ahead and pay for the project while you pay it back. Hang on, Jenna. We've got to go one, one at a time. So i got to get them to ask some right. questions Sorry. and vote on this. So first one we'll talk about, installation contract with the guaranteed energy savings contract. Yeah. Which is? Which right. is the all-encompassing yeah. of the, the job that we talked about minus the engineering design. Yeah, yeah. So that's the installation of the, of the, of the electronic water meters and the savings yeah. of the recapture. Yeah. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. The guaranteed performance. The guaranteed performance. Right. Yeah. And it. it is for the uh, construction of the Yukon uh, project. Yeah. Yeah. Do, we, do we want to vote on these separate? I think you should, but yes, sir. Let's go through uh, 16, 17, 18, bump, bump, yeah. straight, straight ahead. Okay. So this is for the installation contract where we wind up in the meters. Correct. 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 Yes. Right. Council, do we have any questions on this? Move approval. I have a motion by Council Member Connell. Second. Second. Approved by the 16th. Second by Council Member Connell. All in favor of the by saying aye. 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 Opposed in favor of saying nay. Motion by the United States. We want to item 17. Okay. Uh, item 17 is the uh, professional services contract in line with Texas procurement standards yep. that we have to have that as a separate contract. Yep. It is strictly engineering design. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Council, any questions? Direction? Motion to approve. I have a motion by uh, Councilmember Swan to approve item 17. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilmember Hink. All in favor of the same. Aye. 
18 is the financing uh, contract that is going to be the city uh, utilizing first cap first security finance to take out the money to pay for the project and it will get paid back with the schedule that you've seen with the finance. And the first payment isn't due to? It is not due till 726. 25. 25. 725. 725. So two years. So the two years gives you the ability to generate the funds. Yeah. Where is this first security finance based out of? Um, that's a great question. It, they are all it's over. Capital One. It's Capital One it's, that owns them. Capital the, One that owns them. Uh, the gentleman that we spoke with is it's out, out of, of Arkansas. Decent Arkansas. You're well, still scary. Scary. What's that? That's scary. Arkansas. <laughs> Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I thought you were going to duck the others. You guys have something to say. Oh, right. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, hey, nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you all. Um, so, my biggest question on this is when you're saying that the schedule will pay for it, is there an initial cost to the city in this time frame from that happening? No. Is there any money movement between city funds and this one? No, zero. No. Zero? Okay. No. So initially the thing is, is that what they're basically saying is in between when you initiate the contract and start going to 725, it'll, it'll, it'll be roughly about two years, is that the implementation of the program is that they're going to start installing, we'll start seeing the savings. Yeah. So we'll see an additional revenue increase. So those additional revenue increases, what's going to where we're going to turn around and make the payments over the course of the next 20 years for uh, the uh, all the things, all the schedules that they're, they're putting forward. And Dan had requested, I think, the 21st of this month to close on the financing. So yeah. ideally, it sits in an escrow account by the city, yes. and that's what yeah. we pay for mm -hmm. of yeah. the project. But it doesn't touch the city funds until 2025, where and, and which we can do once they vote. So yeah. basically, there's no there's no there's 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 no incursion of debt. And does any affect our bond rates? No. Uh, it, and this is, and Jenna, if you will, this doesn't affect our credit rating or bond. It rating. doesn't sit in any way as to, a debt. No, it does not sit in tra in traditional debt. It is a tax exempt lease purchase, which yeah. is designed for municipalities to do work like this. Yeah. You will see, you will see the line item of your annual payment on your books, but that's because you're yeah. making the payment. But it doesn't affect taxes, bond capacity, or any additional ratings. Yeah. Let me throw this wrench in here. That was asked this question about what happened down in the valley. How are we going to handle? How are we handling the the contract things of that nature? What do you mean? Well, basically, when we went wind up having services going to come in here, let's say, say the, the what we're doing over there at Rainbow or the installation of the meters and things of that nature. You guys are strictly handling. Yes, so we have gone out to bid for every item. We've taken an account from the people of the city of who we've worked with on that. So we've gone out for every subcontractor. Yes, to include subcontractors that are accustomed to working with the city in the yeah. past, yeah. Uh, current uh, engineering firms, uh, Kimley Horn, that's yeah. uh, under contract with your city right. engineer. So there are no you know, red flags for us. And yeah. you are currently, you're also uh, working with uh, on the project at the Wood Building down there in uh, but there's a college, correct? Yes, so correct. we already yeah, completed. You're not new to the area. We are not new to that no. area. We've already completed phase one with Odessa College. I just yeah. don't want a regurgitation of what happened earlier in the year. Exactly. But yeah. that will happen. So the savings will go into an escrow account? So it is up to the city to do that. I can't go in and, and set that well, up, but yes. Mayor, Mayor yeah. I would recommend that, that, that Seth go and open up an escrow account yes. by itself. Yes. Up to so itself and yeah. say PSI escrow account Yes. All caps, all bold. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and that's what we got to do. That's cool. That kind of, that way we don't so it's in its own the yes. We recommend total sales. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's a recommendation. That we would that's, what I, that's what I would recommend. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then, uh, any other further discussion on item 18? Do I have a motion to approve uh, item 18? So I right. have a motion by Council Member Thompson. Second. Second. Second by Council Member I'll give it to you. Uh, take a breath. Uh, Council Member Hay, all in favor of the King, but say not. Aye. Aye. Opposing King, but say nay. Motion passes unanimous. Thank you. Y'all are a good looking council, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jenna. Thanks, Jenna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to say that before. You're supposed to say that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
consider adopting policy and data and for the impact we offset agreement. Mr. Kerr. Good evening, Mayor. Council. Mr. Kerr, we have for your consideration the adoption of policies and guidelines for impact fee offset agreements. Uh, offset, uh, impact fee offsets are the utilization of developer actual cost for impact fee capital infrastructure improvements or off-site infrastructure improvements required by the city as offsets to the assessment of impact fees. Eligible costs uh, encountered by the developer may be used to, to reduce the assessed impact fee as elected by the developer or reimburse the developer from the impact fees collected. There are three methods for the, the offsets to be applied in which the developer either one, receives reimbursement as the fees are collected, accumulated by the city, the developer two, the developer designates an area where offsets will be applied to on a first come, first served basis. So if someone comes in for a building permit, they would not have to pay their uh, impact fees. Uh, three, the developer designates where to apply the offsets on an individual permit basis. So the developer would provide us a document that says you would like to use his offsets on that specific building permit to waive those impact fees. For his negotiation, so to speak. However he wishes to however he wishes. Doesn't say that that's how he probably use that thing. Yes, sir. The agreements are designated as 10-year terms and are only applicable to infrastructure improvements that have occurred after September 9th, 2021, as, as directed. And adoption of the city impact fee or is when the uh, impact fee ordinance was adopted. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Councilor, any questions? Ms. Shaughnessy, any questions? Satisfied. You have the answers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I just believe it's going to help our developers, you know, recruit because they're. You know, yeah. for the building size, I mean, yeah. Yes, sir. This policy gives us, uh, uh, making sure that we're following methods that will be appreciable to the council and to the, to the developers. So this basically finally cleans out the, yes, sir. Uh, the policy and procedures to implement the ordinance? Yes, actually, yes, it does. It cleans it up. Okay. Yeah. And that's that's what we needed. Okay. Council, any other questions? I uh, will entertain a motion to approve items that can be presented. I have a motion by Councilmember Swanson. Second. Second. Second by Councilmember Haney. All in favor of the to say not. Aye. Aye. Opposed and being saying it. Motion passes and after. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to miscellaneous. Uh, item 20, appointment, uh, appointment of boards and board members. Mr. Marble. Yes, Mayor and Council. Um, for the Odessa Arts, we have a vacancy. Councilmember Haney has resigned from the board. So this position is a council member or mayor uh, appointment. And Council Member Vasquez has expressed interest in serving on the Odessa Arts. So moved. Second. Motion. Before your motion, you're supposed to say you're a good looking council person. We have a motion by Council Member Swan, second by Council Member Thompson to appoint the very good looking Council Member Vasquez to the Odessa Arts Council. I'm going to by saying that. Thank you for your support. It's what you call ball and bowl. That's all we got. Yes. Okay, seeing that there is no more business before the city council, I have a motion to adjourn by council member. Uh, I second that motion. We're about to get on the favor of the city by saying aye. Aye. We're opposing the city by saying nay. We're just passing that. We are.